All right, welcome back to Decrypted Tech. Today we've got something a little bit different for you. One of the things we've run into lately is there's been a lot of talk about Ivy Bridge and its thermal issues. Uh, is the thermal interface material what's causing these high temperatures? Is it the CPU? Is it the 20 nanometer process? Is it the new 3D transistors? Is it, you know, pretty much no one seems to know what the issue is. We've seen several different results that seem to indicate that the thermal interface material is not the problem, but now we're seeing a couple of new results that are saying it is. And looking over these results, we found a couple of discrepancies, some things that just jumped out into our head that we wanted to take a look at. One of them is the outrageous temperatures that are being reported for Ivy Bridge, even at a lower overclock. Um, let's say 4.6 gigahertz. We're seeing that people are reporting 84C as far as their load temperatures. We're just not seeing that with our sample here. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to go ahead overclock our CPU, our 3770K, to 4.6 gigahertz using the same voltages that we're seeing, which is 1.2 volts, and see exactly what temperatures we get. Alright, for our test platform we wanted to use ASUS's P8Z77-V Deluxe. It's the one that we currently have up on the test bench. We'll have a full review of that out soon. And we're going to go ahead, we'll show you our CPU Z uh, results here in just a second. Alright, so let's start off by getting CPU Z up here. Alright, we'll go ahead and get that running. And the first thing I want to show you is as you can see, we are running at 4.6 gigahertz here, and our voltage is showing at 1.2 volts. So we've got that set up. Now we're going to go ahead and open up a couple of other things. We've got both core temp as well as AIDA64. So we'll open up that first. We're going to go ahead and open up core temp and we'll take a look at our idle overclock temperatures here. You can see our idle temperatures here, the minimum is 40, 37, 39, and 34. That's going to be across all four cores. So we'll open up uh, AIDA and we'll look at our sensors here as well. So here we see something similar. We see on our cores we have 40, 39, 40, 35. So we're going to have about the same temperatures that we see with these other applications. Get that zoomed in for you. So both are fairly comparable as far as temperature. We're going to run both of them just to make sure that we cover exactly what we need to. And both of these will be left up and running and we'll go ahead and we'll zoom in on each one during our runs. All right, so we'll leave this open. You can see up here that, of course, it was the P7, uh, P8Z77V Deluxe motherboard. We're going to put this over here in the corner. We're just going to shrink this uh, window down so that all you can see is the, the temperatures, and we'll put core temp up here. Now, our first test that we want to run, we're going to go ahead and run Cinebench, since that seems to be one that everybody's running lately. You can see right here we actually had an error running this at 1.2 volts earlier. So 1.2 volts is not exactly the most stable uh, voltage for 4.6 gigahertz overclock. So let's go ahead and get our everything moved o over so we can see it during the run. So you can see core temp over there. So we'll go ahead and start our CPU render. All right now as the CPU render goes, we're going to go ahead and zoom in on first core temp. Now you can see our temps here are not the massive temperatures that we saw on a lot of these other tests. There's no 84, there's nothing popping up that says that we're over, you know, we're over the temp temperature thresholds. And we got the same thing over here, 70, 69, 70, 70, 69. So we're not seeing, we even have a 65 on one of our cores, which is core four. We're not seeing those massive 84C temperatures that a lot of sites are reporting on stock overclock. And now look, we also have an error. Again, 1.2 volts doesn't appear to be exactly the most stable voltage for this. So we could even bump this up to 1.25 volts, which we have found gives us a little bit more stability. And we doubt that we're going to see the same type of temperatures that a lot of people are reporting. But we'll go ahead and close out Cinebench. We're going to open up another one of our favorite tests. This is HyperPi. HyperPi is one of our favorite tests simply because it actually runs a version of SuperPi on every thread available. So you're going to have a full eight instances of SuperPi running, 32 meg instance, on every thread. That's going to push each one of those CPU cores better than probably any other program that we run. We've even seen it max out temperatures better than some of the other benchmarks that are out there that just specifically for that. 
So we'll go ahead and get this started. All right, that's kicked off. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we'll zoom in on our uh, core temp. And you can see even running at 100% CPU, we are still not seeing anything even remotely close to 84C on a 4.6 gigahertz overclock. So we'll move back over here. You can see it's still running through its iterations. It is running 100% on all cores. And there's our temperatures there. Still 64, 67, 68. We could even back up. And we can open up Task Manager. In case you're wondering or you think we might not be uh, telling you the truth. And you can see right there. We're using 100% of the CPU. Every single thread is active. So we'll go ahead and zoom in on that. This kind of makes us wonder about the accuracy of some of the stock overclock temperatures that we're seeing. 84C, we've never seen that. We haven't even seen that when we hit 4.8 gigahertz. So, and that's running at a, at a full load. That's running temperatures that are pretty high, such as 1.38. So we're not sure, again, where these 84C temperatures are coming from. Perhaps there's something going on, or one of the things that we've thought about is that since they've removed the internal heat spreader, are they replacing it with standard silicon-based thermal interface material, making the assumption that that's what Intel's using. That seems to be the most logical conclusion with this. If they're doing that, then they're doing the interface material a disservice. We don't know what it's made of. We've only made assumptions based on its consistency. It could very well be a different type of material. We've seen some of the diamond thermal interface material that looks exactly like silicon base, exactly like the same stuff that you would see on a GPU. And it's just not the same thermal interface material. So again, all this was here is to show you with the internal heat spreader still on using the stock Intel thermal interface material at a 4.6 gigahertz overclock at 1.2 volts, we are not seeing anything close to 84C on this, temp on this CPU with it under load. <clears throat> Alright, well as always if you like this video go ahead and click on the like button. Please share it and be sure to subscribe to us so you can stay up to date with the news and reviews we have for you. We will be following this up to show you what it looks like when we overclock this to uh, one uh, 4.8 gigahertz with a much higher uh, voltage running through the CPU. And that will give you an idea of the delta between these temperatures. Again, we understand that there are better inter interface materials that can be put on this CPU and perhaps it should have been soldered. However, a 20C difference, we're just not seeing it. We haven't seen it and we don't believe that that's the issue. We think in this case, the actual density of the processor, the fact that there's quite a bit of leakage when you get down to 22 nanometers and the new 3D transistors are actually causing this issue. We know that we can overclock this one. This one's been up to 5 gigahertz. We can get into Windows. It's just not stable due to the amount of voltage that we have to push through it. We can get better cooling. We have uh, more advanced cooling. We can reach those speeds stable just based on the thermal profile. But with your standard cooling, such as air cooling or even a water cooler, you're just not going to see it. All right. Thank you.